Tom Bauer, it was interesting. There was a big uh, media briefing attached to the statement, which was not for publication. Very detailed, very long, actually, five pages or so. And as I was reading it, I was thinking, this is not something you would do if this was a trivial matter. I, I do think, we're watching live pictures there outside Buckingham Palace, I do think there's a lot of concern there. I think there's a lot of concern, and rightly so. I mean, uh, King Charles is, after all, our monarch. He's an older man, 75. Uh, I think it has come as a shock to the public. I don't think that it was a complete shock to him. I think he already was feeling unwell for some weeks. And I think that we're just not ready. After having, after all, no. having lost the Queen, we don't really want to lose the King. No. And I think that is the problem, that as, as a, Dr. S. Elton Sutherland rightly said, we rely on the monarchy mm. to keep this country together. Mm. We rely on the monarchy to represent us at all these amazing uh, charities and all the rest that they, the work they do. And without them, I think the country is lost. And yeah. I think that's what we've got to fear, that somehow, as you rightly say, there's a depletion in the ranks. Yes. Uh, Dickie Arbiter, I mean, just on uh, forthcoming events that would have involved the King being centre stage, Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey on March the 11th, uh, and then the King and Queen were expected to visit Canada in May, and then Australia, New Zealand and Samoa for the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting in October. I mean, these are all big events, um, particularly the foreign tours and visits. Um, I, we don't know, of course, whether he'll be up to doing this. But what would happen if he's not able to go? Do they simply postpone it? Do they send Queen Camilla on her own? Do they send other members of the family? What would you be do thinking if you were at the palace now? Well, let me rewind slightly. And if it was the uh, Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, you can't postpone that. Uh, I mean, it has been postponed in the past because of COVID, but there is no reason for it to be postponed. And the King could quite easily delegate uh, the Prince of Wales to go in much the same way as the late Queen delegated uh, the King, current King, when he was Prince of Wales, to go in her stead. So that is not impossible. As far as state visits are concerned to Canada and Australia, these could still go ahead in terms of uh, the Prince of Wales going, and let's hope that the Princess of Wales uh, becomes uh, fit and healthy and well to be able to resume duties. So uh, it's not lost. It's not lost at all. But, you know, you're talking about events in May, in October, and these are a long time hence. Uh, we're only at the beginning of February. Mm -hmm. And I think with the right treatment, the right care, uh, and the right uh, peace of mind uh, on behalf of the King, that we will see him back in harness after Easter. But as far as those engagements are concerned, they're not lost. They won't be postponed. Tessa, the... The statement said that His Majesty has chosen to share the diagnosis, very unusual to do this, to prevent speculation and in the hope it may assist public understanding for those around the world affected by cancer. I thought that was quite a significant change, as Dickie suggested earlier, to normal procedure when it comes to matters of health involving senior royals. It's very true. The late Queen, I think the most we got from her was poor mobility issues, even when she was in the depths of her 90s. Her own father looked literally like walking death towards the end of his life. Doctors could guess that he had cancer, but no word was uttered. In fact, in his Christmas speech, just sort of six weeks prior to his death, he talked about uh, the NHS and the doctors and nurses making him well again. So this is a sea change. Of course, we live in very different times. The king has gone to great lengths to try and establish himself as a more empathetic, progressive monarch. And this is in keeping with that. And like I say, he shared, but he's not overshared. We don't know what the cancer is. We don't know what the treatment would be. Regarding those trips, um, the Edinburgh's, as they were then, Philip and Elizabeth, of course, stepped in for her father and they went to Canada and America in 1951. And depending on Kate's health and of course how their children are, because they have pretty heavy familial duties with three of their own, we might see Kate and William step into the breach for that Australian New Zealand tour, which by definition being long haul will be tiring. Yeah. Tessa, thank you very much. Dickie Arbiter, thank you very much. Tom Bauer, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming in at such short notice tonight on this big breaking news.